And so you can see this melody is heavy on chord tones and trust. No different. It is no different. A harmony is you just putting in the missing notes of the chord you're on that you didn't use in your melody. It is that simple and trusting yourself to sew them together. to another episode of Stitch Method. Make sure you share and subscribe so that you get further notifications of when new videos come out. Now, with that being said, let's get right down to it. We're gonna be talking about uh, how to write effective harmonies. Uh, really easy, actually, I think. And I wanna to talk to you that the answer is quite easy, but it's also in the process of writing the melodies. And so let's just get started. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story really quickly. I was writing a backing track for a couple of students, and I came up with this. I'll show you, I'll play it, and um, I'll show you the chord progression, and it inspired me to write a melody, and then inspired me to write a harmony. So I just want to show you uh, the process, and this is the chord progression. Here we go. Okay, sorry, just, you always want to listen to your loop and make sure it's, uh, it's solid. All right, and so um, when it comes to writing melody, there are many, many ways to write a melody, but let me share with you what I think is the easiest, actually, and the most organic, which is just let your loop play whatever you're writing on. Let it play for minutes and minutes on end until you start to hear something. And when you start to hear something, grab whatever instrument it is that you uh, play, it could be piano, uh, anything, obviously, uh, this is a guitar, and try and figure it out, and try to figure out what you're hearing in your head, go slow. And so that's what happened with this back track, I just let it play, and I heard a, uh, um, a melody line. Now, every good harmony has to have a good melody. And I like this melody, so I'm gonna show it to you, I'm gonna play with it, I'm gonna show you what I came up with, and I'll explain why it works. that and so once I figured it out I said well why does this work and right here in figuring out why it works is the answer to how to write a good harmony so here we go the uh, the first chord is an A the first note I hit that I heard look at that that's an A 10th for the B string so I started off strong A chord A note fantastic now my brain or soul or whatever musician heard this line bah, bah, bah. and so I went from the notes A B to C sharp You'll hear me specifically mention or not mention that I'm thinking of scale. I wasn't thinking of a scale. I was just letting my organic nature just kind of like do its thing and figuring out. And so I had the notes A, B to C sharp. And what's very important is the C sharp. This leads us to the most important fact. This C sharp is in an A chord. Every A chord is A, E, sorry, A, C sharp, and E. And so that C sharp is in the A chord. So you can see my first melody line that does this. Two of those notes, two of the three notes are chord tones. It is very important to understand what notes are in the chord that is being played at the moment. That's the trick to melodies and harmonies. I have an A chord. And the melody that I heard that I enjoyed was a chord tone slid through, uh, it's a major second, but it doesn't matter, just you hear it, you hear it into another chord tone, back to uh, the original chord tone. And so you don't even need to know, honestly, what chord tone, you don't even need to know the intervals right now. 
uh, because you'll see it really, it doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> People are probably like, what? It doesn't matter. Figure it out. Realize, oh, that's an A. Great. That's a C sharp. It's in my A chord. Let's keep on going. I'll play the next part of the, of the melody and I'll explain where it came from. All right. So I have the first part. And now the second part. This part here happens over the G chord. It happens over the G chord, I heard it. Let's take a look. If I play a G-shaped G chord up on this 12th fret here, uh, this note here, this D, is in a G chord, a G chord of the notes G, B, and D. And so my ear heard the D, it heard the chord tone, and then I, my, it organically went to this note, but then to this note, a B. G, Bs, and Ds make up a G chord, I went from a D to a B. I used the C sharp as a stepping stone, probably because my ear already had tied it in. But right now, out of the two chords I have going, two of the three notes of each phrase are chord tones. Now, and also, a B. Interestingly enough, I actually hit this B, I, I lied to you, I hit this B on the E chord. This D here, I hit on the G. This B I hit on the E chord. I'm not going to edit this. I'm going to show you that uh, I hit the E chord. And if you look, an E chord has the B in it. Surprise, surprise. I went to the B there. And I heard this little where I started to finish it up and come back to the A. And so you can see this melody is heavy on chord tones and trust. That's the most important thing. You have to trust yourself. You have to say, OK, these notes make sense. But is my brain hearing the right thing in between? And if you like it, trust yourself. Use it. It's gonna. If, if you like it, somebody else will like it. So this entire first part of the melody is pure chord tones and trust. The second part starts off exactly the same. Then I'll go to the G on the G chord. Bounce off to the A and end on the E on the E chord. My brain heard this, all right? And so the first part I explained A chord tones, G chord tones, E chord tone, A chord, sorry, G chord tone, E chord tone. On the G, the second time around, I went to this G. On the second time around, I went to this E on the E. I'll play it one more time before I move to the harmony. To me, that's a really pleasant and strong melody, all right? So let's get to the harmony. Before we do, I'll be right back. All right, I just had to record the uh, melody onto my looper, which I have now. Let's talk about our harmony. No different. It is no different. A harmony is you just putting in the missing notes of the chord you're on that you didn't use in your melody. It is that simple and trusting yourself to sew them together. So let's take a look at that chord again. We have the A chord. I chose to come in, well, I heard the A note. What other notes exist in an A chord? Well, those are A's, C sharps, and E's. And if I were to stick around the same place, I could make my uh, C-shaped A chord right here. In case you want to watch some cage chord stuff, check out this playlist. This is my C-shaped A chord. This is my root note. Now, when designing this melody, I want to look at the other notes I'm not using. Well, I'm not using the C sharp. I'm not using the E. And right now, I feel like using the C sharp. I can just hear it. So I'm going to use, uh, write a, a higher melody, an upper melody. So my melody goes from... And now I'm going to try and come in on the C sharp, the note I'm not using of the A chord in my melody, but yet it is still there for the, uh, for the picking. <laughs> so here's my C sharp. Now my melody goes... So... Nope, that note... There we go. And I like this choice here. Well, why? Because I end up on an E. This is an E. A, C sharps, and E's make up an A chord. I go from A to the C sharp here, back to the A, and okay, let's try going from the C sharp to the E. Let's just see what this sounds like. I'm really, really just bringing in the notes of the chord that are being played by the chord section, but not by the melody. Come on now. Come on. 
It already sounds great, all right? So this is how you write a melody. Let's just keep going. I started on a note that wasn't in my melody of the chord, went to another note, and it, it was magic. Now, the next part of my, harm my melody, it goes to the D note on the G and with the slide. So where can I slide to in a G? Well, I know it's a G right here, and so let's try it. Oh, sorry. Just coming right. That right there just fell underneath my fingertips. So my, my melody. All right, those are chord tones. I have this. That's my chord tone. Leading with a little bit of trust there into a new chord tone. And then it should work absolutely fine. Let's just uh, see what this sounds like. All right, so a couple things I'm gonna point out. On the G, I slid to the G note. I wasn't playing the G note in my uh, melody. I was playing the D note. And then I walked down the same way, ended up here on the E chord tone. Okay, so what's special about that? Well, here's an E on the E chord. Hitting the E in the E chord is fantastic. I was hitting the B in my melody, but now my E is being played. I'm bringing in a chord tone that wasn't there. So right now my chord tones are I'll just play those. And I'm going to sew them together. Whoa, really? Oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> and I think for that part, I just did. I think it worked out fine. That That's the trust thing there. Like... Let's see what it sounds like. That little last part. Great. It works out fine. That is that right there is more trust than anything. Oh, if you like this, by the way, check out this. It's a very similar video I made about Allman Brothers harmonies, like right there. And and it's the same exact stuff, but more you know tailored toward the Allman Brothers sound. And uh, nonetheless, uh, core tones, uh, trusting yourself, it's always the same when it comes to harmony. So let's keep going. We have another round of that melody to create a different harmony with. I'm going to play it one more time because I, I kind of want to try and do something different. So I just want to kind of, you know, gather my wits. Let's see. On this time around, the second time around, I'm just trying to do something different. Um, I'm trying. I I, uh, I can hear like this up down like that that right. Bam, boom, perfect. This come from the A chord. Good. Let's just see what this sounds like. Oh yeah. Okay. My brain just hears that. Again, it's chord tones and trust. Chord tones and trust. Takes a long time. That's on the A, right? Yeah, it's all on the A. Then comes the G. I want to kind of keep that theme. Uh, I can see my G chord here. And I'm gonna, yeah, there's my A for the, I know that's gonna work. I know it's gonna sound great. I can already see my next move coming. Again, I'm just using chord tones. I'm trying not to use the same chord tones I used in my melody, because I know my melody, I went up here and for here. These are the other chord tones I can bring in. Let's just see how it sounds so far. I can tell you right now, I already know what my last note is, and I'll explain why. So that was up to the A and G. And now it ends on the E. I end on this G. I've been playing guitar for a long time. I know that this G sharp is in my E chord. There's an E chord. 
the S and G sharp. You're going for the chord tones on the changes. You're going for those chord tones at, on the moment that those things change. And I'm one half step away and just bring this note in. It's gonna be perfect. I'll reverse direction there. This is just feeling. And now here, that's an E chord. That's the G sharp and the B. And that should be it, let's see. Like, I'm gonna start on the same exact note on the very first note. Boom! That's crazy. So the, my very first note, I came back and then I hit the A, and it's, it looks like that these two guitar parts are gonna start right on the same note. Boom! And then they're gonna separate. And so I'll play it one more time. Before I do, I hope I'm getting my point across. It is important to understand, that you, you know, the, when you write a melody, it's gonna be, be based on the core tones of the chords and the changes. And then, and also your trust, sewing them together. Not just arpeggios, not just arpeggios, some heart and some movement. And then when you get to the uh, harmony, it is no different. You just gotta use the other notes that you didn't use of your chords that are being played. And if you do, you get something really beautiful. And um, you can hear it here, I really like this, here we go. That's how you write a melody. Okay, so know your chords, know your chord progression, excuse me, know what notes go into those chords. Let your ear and mind hear, uh, listen to the loop, whatever, over and over again until you start to grab onto a melody. You'll find that the melody that you're gonna hear is gonna be like 90% chord tones and 10%, 20%, whatever, uh, of, <laughs> that didn't add up, I know, but what I'm trying to say is it's gonna have a percentage of just heart of movement that you trust get the melody down. Once you have a melody, then you can harmonize it, right? Once you have a melody, then you harmonize and you use the same exact thing. Just don't start on the same note because then you don't have a harmony. It's quite simple. Oh my gosh. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if it made sense. If it wasted your time, I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for being here. If you want to practice this stuff with me, you can practice writing harmonies with me on my Patreon account where I have extra uh, bonus sessions and I'll write new progressions and you will be the harmony master. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.